Hi backers, so with this update we're going to show you a little bit how you can use your ESP8266 board. Here is a Adafruit Hazar Feather board and we have connected to some Adafruit NeoPixels here. So we have power and ground and then the single data pin. Okay, so you can see here I have the prompt, uh, the REPL connected to the board um, and this is just through a normal USB serial port but it could also be through the web REPL. Okay, so let's import the machine module so that we can access the pins. Uh, so make a pin object that the NeoPixel is connected to, pin 14. Um, now import the NeoPixel module Okay, and I'll create a NeoPixel object um, and give it the pin that I'm on and there's eight NeoPixels. Okay, so this NeoPixel object uh, can control our NeoPixel lights. Um, we can look at all of the colors. Okay, so they're all black at the moment. Um, so let's make the first NeoPixel red, like this. Uh, let's have a look. So an easy way is just to list the NeoPixel lights. So you can see the first one is actually is red, uh, even though the 255 is in the second place. So if we do the right, then you'll see that the NeoPixel turns on. Okay, and we can do other things. So say the last NeoPixel, let's turn it on to white. Uh, MP dot right. Okay, so you can control the NeoPixels very easily like this. So I have a little demo uh, that takes a NeoPixel object and does a little light demo. There you go. So the ESP8266 actually runs at 80 megahertz. So let's have a look at its frequency. So it's running at 80 megahertz at the moment and the NeoPixel timing is tuned for that frequency. Um, I can also change the frequency on the fly to 160 megahertz. It's other available frequency so we can see okay now we're at 160 megahertz um, and I can still do the NeoPixel demo because it will retune to the correct frequency. Right so in this demo we're going to get some information from the internet, downloading it from the Open Weather Map uh, website. So let's import our socket module and create a socket uh, and get the address of the website that we want to connect to. Okay, what's the address there? That's the IP address. Um, now we'll connect Okay, the socket connected. Now send our request. Um, so get right. so let's say want to get the weather for London. Um, zero. Slash n, slash n, and I should insert my key there. Okay, and receive, say, the data. Okay, so there we got the response back. Let's save that using the underscore last variable. So the HTML is the data we got back. Um, now let's split it up so we can extract the actual JSON data. So Uh, okay, and then get the last one of that. The last element of that list is the actual JSON data here. So let's save that. Now let's import the JSON module and we can load that data. 
Okay, so now that returns an actual dictionary. Um, so we can say access the the main data uh, and say the temp, the current temperature. Okay, so that's in Kelvin. So subtract the right value to convert to Celsius, and that's the current temperature in London. Okay, in this uh, last demo, we're going to use a one wire temperature sensor uh, and read that sensor, and then post some data to um, to the internet. Okay, so let's uh, again import machine so we can access our pins and the one wire library as well. So let's create the pin that our sensor is on. So the temperature sensors here, there's two of them and they're connected to GPIO pin 14 and then this is the power power rail. So the one wire object one wire dot one wire on the pin. So I've created a one wire bus there. Um, and then a temperature so on a one wire bus you can have many different things so here we're going to create a bus that holds these DS18B20 temperature sensors okay so let's scan for our different sensors okay so you can see there are two and that's their ROM addresses so let's save that okay so ROMs is now the variable containing our addresses of our one wire temperature sensors. Let's do a start a measurement. Um, you have to wait about a second for that to finish, which we have, and then we can get temperature from the first and the second temperature sensor. Okay, so that's great. Now what we'll try and do is post that to the to a um, a feed on Zively. So we have a nice little Zively module here and create a feed on Zively. So I've got my ID and key here stored as some variables. Um, and I can just write um, I can write the temperature there. So that's just written the current temperature to my sensor feed. So let's make a loop and and do that for um, for a while. So let's define a function read and post temperature sensor and to the feed. Uh, so keep going forever. Uh, start our measurement. Uh, sleep for a second. Uh, then I read our temperature sensor and print it out just so we know what we're doing and then write it to the feed okay so that's our function we'll need to import time for that to work right so now we should be able to run that function read and post the temperature sensor and feed are the arguments Okay, so here every second it will read the temperature and post that to the Zively feed. So if I try and increase the temperature of this sensor by holding it, you can see that the temperature is going up. Let's see if we can get it to 30. There we go and it should go down again now if I stop touching it. So this data is being posted to the Zively website um, and you can see here the the data being graphed. So if we if we reload this page we'll see the um, updated data. Okay, and so to break out of this loop, we can just press Control C, um, and it will stop that infinite loop. Okay, so I hope that uh, 
you got a good sense of what you can do so far. So there's lots of things that are implemented, but still lots of things um, that we've got to go. We'd like to implement and make the um, the ESP8266 a really great chip for doing Internet of Things applications. Thank you.